Reggie Aloysius Miller, a little bonus coverage. The Final Four calling us from uh, Indianapolis. Uh, Reg, I, I was asking you before uh, we uh, decided to get a better phone connection. Did Duke play a more physical style different than what we had seen before? And uh, Because it seemed to disrupt uh, Wisconsin a little bit. Absolutely, especially in the second half. And I do apologize. Uh, I'm still on my cell phone. Couldn't fa- find a landline. So but it's a little scratchy to the people listening and watching. I apologize. But, yeah, uh, definitely in the second half. Um, they really stepped up their pressure defense, especially on the perimeter to Koenig and Decker. Um, but, you know, personally to me, and I said this uh, post game, I think where Wisconsin lost it, and I'm giving Duke all the credit because they won that basketball game. They went out and they took that game. But to me, where Wisconsin lost it is when they were up nine yeah. and Okafor and Winslow both on the bench with foul trouble. That's the time for a veteran team like Wisconsin with a bunch of juniors and seniors. That was the moment that they were supposed to tighten the screws and take it to another level. But yet, they let a freshman, and God bless him, Grayson Allen was a godsend for Coach K. He went on a personal 8-0 run. They cut the lead to one, and it was almost like the air got let out of the Badgers from that point on. I, th- I thought they were spent, Reg. I-, I still think Saturday night against Kentucky took something out. Kentucky you know? Blues. We talked about that. Kentucky Blues. And, uh, I mean, it's easy to say that, but they put themselves in position to win that ball game. They did exactly what the game plan was. Go right at Okafor and get him into foul trouble, as well as Winslow. Uh, they made timely threes. And I think you and I talked about this on Monday. Um, I thought this game was going to come down to free throws. And Wisconsin, they shot 77% on the season. 10th best in college basketball. Well, Duke only shot 69%, I believe 152nd in college basketball. So I thought, look, Wisconsin is going to be the more aggressive team. They're going to make their free throws. But yet, it was flip-flop. Wisconsin only went to the line 10 times and only made six of them, whereas Duke was the more aggressive team. Tyus Jones, Grayson Alley combined, I believe, for 13 of 13 from the free throw line. So I give a lot of credit to Duke, Coach K. They were the more aggressive team. The player that you could see as a franchise player in the NBA that you saw in the tournament, or is there one? Well, I mean, franchise where, I mean, he's going to be a perennial all-star and he could just throw the ball down to him and he's going to carry you. It's easier to say, I think Jahil Okafor's game is more suited to the pro game along with Towns. I mean, there was some ticky tack fouls last night, but let me just say this. The officiating was bad, but it was bad on both sides. And I know Bo Ryan is upset, and I'm going to give him a little bit of a longer leash because emotions are running high, just like I gave Harrison a leash after what he said about Kaminsky. Um, you know, in the heat of the moment, you're frustrated. You're playing for the ultimate goal. And look, Duke was the better team. And I'm going to give Coach Ryan a little bit of a leash. I think he, he should have congratulated Duke. Um, but you can't go on national TV and whine about the officials because, again, you had a nine-point lead with the two best players for Duke on the bench, yep. and you let a freshman come in yep. and do you in. I agree. I, I said the same thing. Plus, Duke beat him twice. It beat him back in December and beat him. You know, it, it wasn't an accident that they won, although I will say this. Duke did sneak up on college basketball this year, which is pretty incredible for, for well, a Duke talk- team to – you talk about the defense. Teams were scoring about 66 points versus Duke, which was, it's, it's pretty good. But in this tournament, uh, up until last night, teams were only scoring 55 points. I mean, and that's, I believe, the third best since the mid-'80s. So, look, defensively, they brought their A game. And it wasn't a close game uh, for any of these for Duke until last night. They were challenged. And, look, they hit the mat. And they got up. It was an eight count, and they responded. Wisconsin could not respond. Talking to Reggie Miller, NBA on TNT, and, of course, uh, part of CBS's coverage last night at the Final Four. Didn't hear a passion bucket. Thought we were going to get that, Reg. 
I, I tried to get it in, mm. but look, Seth Davis and Charles, they just, and then these guys, like the, they're like airtime, man, you know? You know, I was trying to be, get my points in, I was getting ready to come with it, and then here comes Greg Gumbel and Smitty, like, cutting me off. So I apologize to our fans, Theodore. You know, Passion Bucket is, you know, that's something that's close and dear to our heart. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't get it in. I'm, I apologize. What should we look for down the stretch here with the uh, NBA season? The home stretch. Well, number one, there's a pretty nice race going on for that eighth spot. Uh, you know, between Boston, Miami, Indiana. And again, people are saying, well, it's only the eighth spot. But the number one team is Atlanta. And it's not like you're going against Cleveland or Chicago, who at the beginning of the season, we said were the two best teams mm -hmm. uh, in the Eastern Conference. I'm not saying, you know, one of those three teams can beat Atlanta. But it's possible, especially with Paul George coming back, uh, you know, with Indiana. Um, anything is possible. But uh, it's going to be some intriguing matchups out west. Obviously, one through eight is going to be an unbelievable first round, other than, I think, whoever plays Golden State. But uh, it, it's I'm looking forward. This is 40 games and 40 nights, the TNT uh, moniker. I cannot wait for this. This is going to be an unbelievable playoff season, just like we saw uh, in the NCAA. Tell me what you think of this nickname I have for James Harden. Uh-oh. Harden the Interruption. Did you, are you serious? I'm dead Did serious. Did you come up with that all by yourself? Yes. Are you blown away by it? Yeah, I'm blown away by how bad it is. Are you kidding me? I'm blown away by how, come on. Harden the Harden. Interruption? <laughs> come on, man. I like the barber. And I like the barber. That's to me. That is his, that's the nickname. He's given up cut the barber. Well, I've I've nicknamed Westbrook the Razor because he because he slices people up and he doesn't shave. He says he's never shaved. Oh my God! You have too much time on your hand, Theodore. I love you. You're a brother. <laughs> you got to come with some better nicknames, harden, my friend. Harden the interruption. I like the Terminator because this dude is a machine. Oh, I like the Terminator. He's I, a machine. He's I a got, triple double machine. I got t shirts made up. Harden the interruption. All right, send me one. <laughs> double XL. No, I'll, I'll rock it around the mean streets of Malibu. See how people, you know, oh my God, is that, if they pick up on it, then, you know, I'll, obviously I'll give you kudos if they're like, who the heck is that? I don't know if, I don't know if Malibu is my target audience here. It is. The mean streets of Malibu. <laughs> look, they know. Are there know. other sides? Of the, is there like the other side of the tracks in Malibu? Absolutely. <laughs> you have the very wealthy, and then you have people like me, the lower income people. <laughs> Who is the richest person on your street? I have no idea. Yes, Don't you do. I have no idea. All I know is that. Larry Ellison owns. Then he's Malibu. the guy. Then Larry he's Ellison the is the richest guy. He's the guy. Wait, That's he, all I know. Didn't Larry buy Hawaii? So what's next? <laughs> well, him and Oprah, they both own Hawaii, don't they? Man. But are they happy, Reg? That's really the key. I know. You know, how can you be happy with a billion dollars? Really? I don't, you, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know how people do it. Have you been in Oprah's I just, house? I just don't. What's that? Have you been to Oprah's house? I have not. Oh, yeah. She's got a nice... Oh, here's a, no, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Who's the richest person's house you've been to? Richest house. Let's see. See, is that a good one? The richest person's house you've been to? Hugh Hefner. You were in the mansion? Yeah. In the grotto? Yeah. Oh, my God. Really? Were there bunnies all around? Oh, silence! Don't act like you haven't been in the mansion. Isn't that I how UCLA got you to go there? That you got to oh, have a free pass? <laughs> are you? Are you saying? That yes. You, yes. That UCLA has Hugh Hefner in his pocket. Is that what you're telling me? I, I'm not telling you. I'm only repeating what you told me. Yeah, right. You have you but been? Yes. You've been to the mansion. I, I have been to the mansion, but that wouldn't be the richest person's house I've been in. Who's, whose house is the richest you've been in? I would probably say the owner of the Pacers, which... Oh, okay. Herb and Mel Simon, I would probably say their house. Okay. Okay. 
I was invited once. Just kidding. I was there multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Simon, I love you. I'm only kidding. I was only kidding. Is KG's house all tricked out in Malibu? Yeah. Yeah, he has a nice house. Yeah. He's adding on to his home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I take that back. KG's the richest house I may have been in. <laughs> I take that back. Kevin, you know you're balling in Malibu. He is the richest. Really? In Malibu. Yeah, he's got it going on. But what did he make during his year? Like $500 million? I don't know, Reg. We never do that career salary. Remember when you said, you know, we shouldn't do that I'm with you? I'm you. You guys were <laughs> speculating online. I, I got I'm KG. Still... I'm going to say KG over under $360 million. Paulie? I don't want to give out specific numbers, but Reggie, if you played 34 years in the NBA at your salary, yeah. you'd have the same salary as Kevin Garnett. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. KG, God bless you. Hard work pays, brother. Oh, my God. I'm hard work God. pays. I love you. Uh, safe travels. When are you back uh, on the air with TNT? We have You Miami. got Thursday, right, Miami? I got Thursday. Hey, back to my day job. I back like to it. my day job. I like it. Uh, safe travels. Thanks for the bonus coverage. You got it, guys. Thank you, everything. All right. That's uh, Reggie Miller, NBA on TNT.